Good evening and uh, welcome to uh, Mashpee's Board of Selectmen's meeting, November 27, 2017. If you'd uh, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> and if you'd uh, join us for a moment of silence for those who have uh, lost their lives protecting our rights and freedoms. Thank you. Um, I need a. Uh, I make a motion to approve. Monday, November 13, regular sessions, minutes. Second. Okay. Everybody in, all in favor of that? And a roll call, please. Yes. 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 <coughs> uh, Jeff, public comment? Okay. I, I'm going to jump down to uh, how, how long is the, well, cons the conservation? Why do we go to new business? Um, I think conservation might be a little bit of a no, are you going to be short? Are you going to 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Okay. 10 minutes. Okay. Why don't you uh, step up and do your presentation, sure. and we'll get to Jason after that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm Drew McManus, a uh, conservation agent for the town of Mashby. And uh, we're here tonight just to present to you some of the uh, updates we've been uh, creating for the conservation uh, parcels. Uh, in terms of public access, getting the word out there, getting visibility increased. Um, so you're going to see some uh, highlights of projects we've worked on, some updates to the website, and I'll turn it over to Caitlin to describe it. Then it'll be a, a short little demonstration of the website on how to access some of the features. Great. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. I'm Caitlin Carter, the Assistant Conservation Agent, and I'll jump in right into it here. So recently we launched a new interactive trail map um, and we utilize the same interface that is on the Mashpee Town website uh, that's used by the public and town officials alike to determine resource areas and jurisdiction. Um, so the interactive trail map opens with all of the trails already um, activated on the table to the left. Uh, I will do a live demonstration, this is just a quick uh, synopsis. Um, and you can click on the respective trail with the yellow circle. Um, it'll bring, it'll open up a either a, a trail video or a trail guide. I mean, excuse me, it'll open up the trail guide and the trail video if it's available for that parcel, which we're working on getting most of them um, to have one. We have three right now that do. Uh, so trail guide will bring you to, um, to our uh, existing trail, in, uh, online trail guide and also it'll link you to the um, trail fit the trail video and it will work it just like this Caitlin yes I'm actually going to show you right now on the website how to get there so this is the conservation page oh excuse me sorry I didn't mean to click that um, and you go down to things to do and see in on Mashpee conservation areas and it's under trail map interactive brings you right to the page a quick little intro. Oh, and uh, Clay Nicholson was um, integral in getting this uh, launched. He did a lot of the actual legwork. It was just kind of um, the I was, I was throwing around since I started. Um, so again, as you can see, the trails all, off to the left are all uh, clicked off, and um, you can also see that there is the Mashpee National Wildlife Refuge boundary highlighted, so you can see what trails are, are within the refuge and which ones are not. Um, and some of them are grayed out, and the closer you go, they will, uh, it will activate them. They're just too small to register on that. Um, so I will, uh, for an example, I'll show you Santua Pond, Pres Santua Pond Preserve. Um, again, oh, excuse me. So you click on the trail, and again, here you go to either the trail guide or the trail video. So I'll show you the video again we have three made Santua Pond Preserve, Mashpee River Woodlands and John's Pond so I'll, it's a quick little m minute and 16 second video 
uh, Dylan Stevens from Saddleback Solutions created these videos for us. And as you know, they're uh, nice and succinct and short as their attention spans these days aren't very long, so. The drone footage is really, um, is really nice. Really highlights the parcel as a whole. And just an example of the trail guide that would it would also link to. I do have to work on updating a couple of the trail maps, and um, some of them still have to be linked. So it's still in a, some prelim in a preliminary phase, but I think it's a really great snapshot for people to to see exactly where all the trails are, mm -hmm. in respect to either where they live or where they're vacationing in Mashby. Um, <laughs> So that is uh, something I'm really glad we finally got around to um, getting launched. And uh, I will um, update you as soon as uh, it's in its final stages as well. So um, just to go into some projects that we've been working on additionally, and workshops and conferences I've attended, et cetera. Um, so from the Mashpee National Wildlife Refuge, just got a uh, framed map that I'm uh, picking up from Jay Miller here uh, locally. And that's what it's going to be, the big map of the refuge. Um, I think it would be a great addition to Town Hall as a lot of people aren't aware of the refuge. Back in September, I attended a uh, friends training in D.C., the Friends of the Mashpee National Wildlife Refuge. Um, it's a volunteer organization that uh, does implement a lot of um, the projects and groundwork and works for advocacy as well. Um, and as of uh, November 2nd, we had an annual meeting, our annual meeting at uh, Wakoit Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve. There were about 40 attendees and Justin Fleming from the Sea Run Brookshout uh, Coalition presented on the work that they've been doing in um, the Santuit and Mashpee Rivers to uh, restore Brookshout habitat. <clears throat> So this is just a few snapshots of uh, a couple of the presentations and uh, having visited the, uh, our representatives and uh, in, our, in Congress as well in, in, um, on Capitol Hill was uh, quite an interesting experience. Um, so other workshops, conferences attended. I uh, attended a trail conference in Lemonster, and there were some really interesting bits and pieces I've learned there that I um, that I think it'll be great to uh, to bring to the job. Um, especially uh, a few things that I haven't noticed before, uh, wasn't aware of before, as of such as trail placement and sensitive habitats, as past recreation can negatively affect wildlife up to 50 meters off trail, depending on what we're talking about. So um, most of our trails are very responsibly uh, um, laid down with those things in mind, but it's just you know something to keep to keep uh, cognizant of um, and ways to design trails to divert water flow as uh, runoff issues are are so um, prevalent in town and uh, we've been. I've been uh, working with AmeriCorps, as you'll see, in a few steps, and also Eagle Scouts have been working on these types of projects to uh, divert water flow using some of these uh, mechanisms that um, was uh, taught at the conference. Um, also, edible invasive species. We have so many in town, and I think it'd be a great way to try to uh, tackle the problem and also be able to um, actually make use of, of what of what's being removed, such as Japanese knotweed. Apparently, it's just like rhubarb. Um, so just a few other <clears throat> little bits and pieces from the tree ID conference that I attended additionally, which is also going to be helpful um, to educate the public as well as uh, just be more informed as an assistant agent. 
Um, so recently uh, we've hosted some AmeriCorps uh, project days, which we've been doing now for, for a number of years. They've, they're super important to the town and, uh, and to us, of course. Um, we really couldn't do a lot of our work without them. Um, so as of right now, uh, we started working on trail steps at Santua Pond Preserve, again, along the same lines of uh, minimizing the runoff and drainage issues and making it a safer place for people to access as well. So we've been working on uh, adding some trail steps there. Um, so that, yeah, that was at Santua Pond Preserve. They also did some really great uh, chainsaw work from all of the, from a few down trees at Pickerel Cove, Mashpee River Woodlands, uh, Fitch and John Johansson properties. So that was really, really um, impressive. Uh, that was from the, the high winds that we've, um, you know, been experiencing lately, especially that one a couple weeks ago. Um, and uh, the most recent Eagle Scout project that's been done in town, again, along the same lines of minimizing uh, runoff and erosion, um, was occurred at 95 Timber Lane Drive. Uh, it first was started by Patrick Flynn and was finished by Nick Distilio. Um, and they did an excellent job. Uh, it's, it's also a recreation, it's a recreation area that's also been reestablished for, uh, for the neighborhood folks. And they also removed some invasive species from the area. So overall, it was an improvement um, for the resource area and for the public alike. Uh, also, um, we recently launched a new Facebook page um, lay, uh, for the Mashpee Land Stewards. Um, and these are just a few of the, uh, the activities we've been highlighting, including uh, some videos about the herring runs and, of course, the project by the Eagle Scout and also um, any other networking and uh, interesting activities that may uh, interest the public, such as meeting Earl Mills down at the uh, community gardens. That was a really good day. No political posts. <laughs> 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 nope, nope, nothing like that. It's all very, very, you know, cut and dry. Um, so we uh, recently applied for a grant to reburn um, area off of Gray Hay Road that was uh, subsequently burned, I believe, in 2015. So every two years it helps um, to reinvigorate the shrub growth and that uh, helps out the New England cottontail, keeps it from being listed, and the listed eastern box turtle in addition to other species. Um, also, as you're, I'm sure, aware that we received the funding from the Division of Ecological Restoration to do the preliminary work at the Samson Mill Road culvert, which would improve the flow for Santuart River. Um, and improve conditions for the Sea Run Brook Trout and River Herring. Uh, cleaning up illegal dumping, it's uh, been in increasing a little bit as of late. It seems to have leveled off a little bit. Drew and I have been on top of it, um, getting out there as best we can, as much as most often as we can, to pick <coughs> up what is out there, as well as just being a presence on the land, because that's a best deterrent, honestly. Um, one of the biggest problem areas that we just cleaned up, and it's a clean slate now, is off Holland Mill Road, off of Gray Hay Road. They're both dirt roads. Um, but this big fire pit uh, area, as you can see, is just a real, a real problem. Um, so luckily, DPW was, uh, we were fortunate enough for them to be able to allocate their time to, to clean it up and really get it back to good. So this is in the Pine Barrens Conservation Area. Um, and these are just another example of lots of uh, shopping carts down at Quashnet River, at the Quashnet Woodlands that we've picked up. That's John Adams, one of the land stewards. Um, some, just a few other problem areas. That's a little fireball nip in the uh, Mashpee River herring run. Nips are a huge problem. Um, and just, just examples of some other um, bits of trash. So uh, some improvements we've made lately to conservation areas. We added a pollinator garden outside of they're at the Santu Upon Preserve sign. Um, so that'll be, once that gets established, that'll be really um, aesthetically pleasing as well as educational. Um, added some new pollinator boxes, added some uh, ID rocks to, so people will know which pollinator plants are there so they can plant them themselves. Um, we repainted that kiosk that was uh, vandalized at Mash River Woodlands. Um, 
added uh, signage to keep boats off beach grass, added some more uh, no-take herring signs at Quashnet River and Santuit River, and added doggy kiosks to Bessie Boggs, so just general improvements. And last but not least, uh, the um, infraction at John's Pond that occurred back in November, um, excuse me, September. Uh, we did have a magistrate hearing. The, we decided to uphold it for 600 of the $900 in fines, um, as he was very, uh, he was really easy to work with, and he, he did not, um, he knew exactly that he was caught <laughs> red-handed. So it, um, it, and, uh, with all said and done, it was, it was positive in that um, he definitely learned his lesson, and it also got into the enterprise. Um, <laughs> so that's also good to show the public how serious we take these these issues. And that's all I got. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Kate. Thank you. Great presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Looks great. Looks like you've done a lot of hard work out there. Yeah, Dylan's done a really great job with the video. Dylan and Stephen, the guy who created the videos, there's two other ones, one's for John's Pond and another one for um, Mashpee River Woodlands. Uh, so we're definitely going to have them come back and do videos for some of our other larger parcels that have established parking and uh, a network of trails so we can create videos for those too because I think you did an amazing job and um, I think it'll really help to get people out there, which the more people on the land with responsible uh, presence helps to deter those uh, who are doing prohibited activities, so it's really I, a, I love it. I mean, the more people can get out there, so some amazing trails out there. Yeah. Um, behind me is Mashpee Woodland. We're out there all the time. Uh, everybody else should enjoy it as well. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks. I just want to note, I want to, you know, thank Rodney for recognizing the need to, you know, make investments in our public resources and finding room within our budget this year to expand Caitlin's hours. I think you can see kind of return that you get on it and it's more than just buying the land and saying we're done with it if we make it accessible to people some of the things that drew suggests you know some of the bad things that cost us money get prevented and people are better off being outside connected to the outside world so it's a great place to make an investment agreed agree. and I'm very pleased with the video and mm -hmm. I appreciate the work that was done on that very good I think Castle, Dylan's a master Castle resident Castle. isn't he Yes, yes. Dylan live right up the street. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have a, uh, a public hearing, uh, so we need to uh, open the public hearing. Six body for the tax classification. Jason Stiebel and Craig Mayen. Under Chapter 40, Section 56, as amended by the Chapter 369 of the Act of 1982 and chartered 79 of the acts of 1983 the mashpee board of selectmen will conduct a public hearing on whether the town of mashpee should implement classification act at said hearing the selectmen will hear testimony as to what will be the fiscal year 2018 residential factor which will determine the share of the taxes each classification of property will pay what will be the open space factor and whether there will be residential exception exemption and or small business exemption said hearing will be conducted on monday november 27 2017 at 650 in the <laughs> mashby town hall great neck road north mashby per order of the board of selectmen jason good evening uh, jason strebel director of assessing uh, back for our annual meeting on this uh, topic. Um, I did distribute uh, packets, um, which I'm sure you got with a lot of information in it. Be happy to answer any questions along the way. Um, briefly, what we have is a, uh, assuming a uh, tax rate of one, there's a reduction in our tax rate um, of about 16 cents in the town rate. Um, for one year. For one year. <laughs> that is due primarily to the high school uh, being paid off and the Quashnet bills not yet um, being on the um, tax rate. Okay, so there's a little dip for one year. Might want to enjoy it, um, but uh, it's a positive thing. It also helped that the uh, valuations have gone up with the uh, the economy and the housing market has provided uh, another impetus for the tax rate. Would have dropped a few cents anyways. 
I believe it was about 10 cents that was the high school that was on the tax rate previously. Um, so the other um, is, is due to, um, you know, the uh, increase in values, increase in values and also the, the drop of the um, exclusion, that exclusion is, thank you, I'm sorry, still getting over a cold here, my brain's not working. Um, <coughs> so proposed tax rate at this point uh, would be um, $8.92, down from 908 last year. Um, incidentally, uh, just for your information, the water district uh, tax rate is uh, looking like it'll be dropping a penny down to 10 cents per thousand. CPA rate doesn't change. Mathematically, 3% of the town tax rate still comes out to 27 cents uh, per thousand. And that would make a total tax rate this year of $9.29 um, from $9.46 last year. Um, the excess levy capacity for this year is calculated to be $804,715.29. And what can I answer for you? What would you? What's the average tax bill change going to be? The average tax bill change is likely to drop um, a good 100, 150 bucks, yeah. depending on your house. And what do you project? You said this is a one-year drop? I do project a one-year drop. Uh, the uh, debt exclusion for the quash net, um, I'm not sure yet uh, how much is going to be borrowed that first year, how much will be uh, in that first year. That'll do, we'll figure that out probably in the summertime. Um, you can count on the tax rate changing by a penny, roughly for every $50,000 of the levy. We have take the Cape Tech too. To that is another looming um, debt exclusion at this point. I don't think that's uh, finalized yet. Obviously, that will have an impact, significant Come impact. Me. Mm -hmm. But that wouldn't. In the tax rate, not necessarily in I values. Guess, well, it, it, that no. may not even hit in 19, even though you authorize the debt exclusion. I mean, that, that's true. I mean, that's you have to incur the, incur the debt and then have debt service six months later before. So then that's going to push off. It, it might. It might bit. very well, depending on the timing. Absolutely. How much is, what was the, um, in terms of comparing apples to apples, what was the size of the high school debt versus the, compared to the size of the quotient? This is one of the reasons I brought Craig. <laughs> <laughs> um, like you said, the quotient school hasn't been uh, bonded yet, but it'll probably be about the same when the question it is going to be about six million dollars um, total six and a half million um, so when that goes on it'll be about the same amount as so it's the, kind of basically one for one swap for the yes, one high school yeah. was yeah. yep yeah approximately approximately which was approximately 10 cents depending on values in, in, in a given year of the taxes tax rate was due to the high school it would also be due to question it Similar numbers can be extrapolated for. So then we have <coughs> Cape Tech. Cape Tech, right. And of course, the huge elephant in the room that we don't know is the uh, water resources and management. Uh, well, yes, we don't know that. Um, we don't even know how many years down the road, I suppose, that is um, going to be, and whether that is going to be folded into the tax rate as a debt exclusion or into betterments or a combination of both. And <laughs> we'll need to work those numbers very carefully when we get to that point uh, so the board can decide how they want to approach it. Great. I think that's something we should probably sit down and figure out be before. We Long leave. before. We'll get together whenever you're ready on that. That's something that we should probably be scheduling anyway. So. Or other alternatives. Yes, yeah. or other alternatives if possible. <laughs> it's just, and I think everyone is anyways, we get, they keep that in mind that uh, it's coming. It and, is. It, you know, I've, not just us, I'm sure, the rest of the Cape is looking at this, too, in a lot of different ways. So, um, And they're looking at the tech, a lot of them, too. So, um, How much conversation did uh, the assessors have about any of the exemptions? Uh, the conversation was the board thought that the fairest approach was to recommend that there be no uh, shifting in the tax burden from one class to another. Uh, they recommend a tax rate. Uh, tax factor of one for all classes of property. 
um, including open space. Um, the residential exemption, um, they feel that uh, is, is not a, a viable shift in the tax burden at this point. And a small commercial exemption um, benefits a very limited number of, of um, properties and would just raise the commercial tax rate overall. So well, we don't have a commercial tax rate. That's right, but you would if you if you gave a small a commercial exemption, you would shift the tax burden to ready. You could just shift it to residential also, um, but it would shift it a little bit. But there set up a separate rate for commercial. So you'd have a split rate, and then you'd have two rates within the one side. Um, it depends on what you do on the other side. No, if you could shift it just if you just did the residential, I mean the commercial small commercial exemption, you would shift it to the entire tax uh, base. Right, but you'd have to adopt a commercial rate. In order to shift to it just that. within commercial, you'd have to adopt a commercial rate. That's correct. And I guess my question was, yeah. how much was it talked about? Or was it just dismissed by rote? As no, no, they actually did consider it. You know, they, they know it's an issue every year for people to, to consider. Um, but one of these things, thought, especially in the small commercial exemption, um, or even shifting of the tax rate to um, commercial to while you may be lessening the tax rate for residential properties a little bit by shifting the tax rate in commercial, um, half of all the taxes that we pay here in Mashpee, of course, go to our education system, um, which yeah, I'm sure everyone is, is fine with. But the businesses will be the first to say they don't have kids in the school, even though they may benefit from the output of the schools. The other thing is, really down the road, the, the, the board considered that businesses don't <coughs> pay taxes, really. Um, if they get an expense increase a la taxes, they raise the pro price of their product for the most part, at least as much as they can. And if they can't get customers to pay that, they move on or go out of business. Um, but generally speaking, that, that tax rate shift is passed along one way or another. So they thought the best option would be to recommend. Um, I do note that the board has in the past wanting to, as soon as you hit 8%, you were going to talk about this commercial tax rate shift. Um, one thing I'm hearing out of Boston is a legal challenge to personal property and whether or not that is actually subjected to the ta shifting of the tax rate. So once that legal wrangling is figured out, uh, I think there's even a case pending about that, but I'm not sure yet. I'm still waiting to hear. Um, that would take, that has the potential of taking the personal property out of that class, which is 1.2% of our current tax base, which would bring it down to 77 percent commercial industrial shift at this point. The other uh, thought to keep in mind is that shifting of the commercial rate um, requires a software upgrade, requires funding for that software upgrade, and would delay the issuance of the actual tax bills. Um, Craig's office would have to do quite a bit of uh, maneuvering to get that out. The tax bills would be late. Um, probably fourth quarter would go out sometime in May, maybe, maybe longer. Um, we could issue third quarter preliminaries, but it would throw things out of whack. Um, as far as a different commercial rate, um, do other towns have? And maybe if, for an example, Falmouth? Um, Barnesville um, has had, they've, they've taken it off. They had, uh, for several years, Barnesville had a shifted uh, rate. And even their districts, the fire districts, shifted their tax rates. Um, and um, actually, when I was there, they decided to do this. We ended up with 19 different tax rates in the town from five different districts and the town itself shifting their rates. Um, it turned out to be unworkable. And I, for whatever reason, they just said it wasn't worth the shifting. There was a lot of complaints from the business community. They were all threatening to do business elsewhere, et cetera, and so forth. Um, I think the, the best option, if this board wants to do that, just personally speaking, is once your commercial base is set and there's not going to be a lot of fluctuation, you could possibly uh, look at something like that where you're not going to have a lot of, well, maybe I won't move to Mashpee, you know, kind of issues. Yeah, there's not too much land left, I think, for commercial. Yeah, I mean, it's Mashpee Commons, as you know, and a few um, other facilities around. Right, and they're looking to change <coughs> the plan. Yeah. Less, more residential, less commercial. So. Okay. But it's all going to be clear. But it's all commercial. It all falls within the commercial frame. I mean, all that land zone commercial, even if there's residential there. So, if, I mean, you, if, do I recall right? You to one point said, I think you said 10% of your tax base 
is sort of the threshold for considering commercial. Generally speaking, viable. that's what I've heard other towns uh, consider. Um, they generally consider that to be a, a trigger number, if you will, at least to consider it um, seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on residential, as far as uh, Mashpee Commons or anywhere else, it depends if that residential is residential use or if it is commercial use via rentals, which becomes a commercial use. Very good. Any other questions? Well, I'll just say, uh, you know, two things. And I'm on the losing side of this every year. So, um, you know, while the one-year dip is fine, um, it still leads me to think that having some form of, you know, stabilized debt service reserve, knowing we have all this debt piling up in front of us, I think it makes it, it's nice, everybody says, yippee, your tax rate went down, and you know that more stuff's looming a year or two out, and all it does is increase the slope of the upswing, and it makes everybody get the eebie-jeebies about it. So I think a flatter curve is a better way to do it. I know there's not a lot of support for it. Um, you know, and the other thing is, you know, the only real way to give the average person who lives here, which is on, you know, the average year-round resident in this town, is on the <coughs> lower end of the economic curve compared to the average uh, seasonal person. And so, you know, I know I'm not sure what, fair is the most subjective word I've ever heard. Depends where you are, determine what's fair. You can say we're treating everybody <coughs> equally, and that's the fairest, but not everybody's sitting in the same position. So its impact on them is different. So I continue to think that a residential exemption helps the people who need the help the most economically in town. Um, but I know there's no appetite for it. Just have a conversation. What what figure would you be figuring on your residential exempt, exemption? Um, I don't have one at this point. I mean, you know, they modeled the they modeled the high end. Um, you modeled thirty percent, I think. I don't know thirty percent. There's actually uh, talk of trying to do it to forty percent now, and there may be actually possible doing it to forty percent. I thought thirty was the legal limit. It was. It still is at the moment. But what's this was all started by Boston. Right. This this residential exemption was started by Boston, and they started with the ten percent, twenty percent wasn't working. Still, the shift just wasn't doing what they wanted to do, so they went to 30, and now they're talking about wanting to go to 40 because it's, it's still not having whatever effect they thought they were going to have on it. Um, and I don't know if that's just the economies of Boston or if that is the economies of this program in general. Um, Jason, but, am I correct that it used to be, uh, I don't think I read about any of this, Nantucket's the only thing on Cape and Islands. Provincetown adopted after we Provincetown rejected Town it. Provincetown yes. adopted it. Barnesville still has it. The um, Provincetown, yeah, but Barnesville, that's why I asked what rate has a different form of it, isn't it? Aren't they at a lot lower rate? Um, they do. They are at a lower overall tax rate. That is a lot lower. Um, when you sh when you have a residential exemption, it actually raises the res residential tax rate. So you often end up with a commercial rate, assuming you don't have a shift, lower than the residential rate, because um, it shifts the tax rate within that class of properties. Um, the only place that I've heard that this works where no one complains on either side is Nantucket. I believe has the residential exemption and because the values are so high and the year-round population is so small nobody notices it, it doesn't really you know and it, and it helps the people there the people year-rounders but it, it, no one notices it in their in their shift the province town did it i think because i talked to them a lot about it because year-round residents couldn't afford they were getting priced out and so it was you know the only viable option available to give the average person some pro property tax. Now, relief. did they go 30 percent? I don't know. That's I don't know what their number was. <clears throat> I didn't put much time into it based on our prior conversations, mm -hmm. but um, you know, if there's interest in it, we could we could evaluate it a little bit more. But that's kind of where my mind is. I just think that um, you know. But is we, it a, we, is it a residential exemption? I mean, yes. difference, or should it be a, a, an economic needs? I mean, do you you're just not allowed to? to under, you're not allowed to. See, you're allowed to do it. You're allowed to exempt a certain amount of value for year-round residents before you start taxing. That's why the rate issue. You know, the rate thing is kind of a. It's a little bit of a red herring. Yes, it is. But uh, because you know, if you're taxing something at a higher rate, but you're taxing less of its value, 
um, you know, the, the bill is what people, at the end of the day, will it's argue. The bill. No, no, yeah. no matter what Joyce said, right. it's not the rate, it's the bill. That's absolutely <laughs> right. If the bill goes up, that's what people realize. They don't mm -hmm. sit there and go, oh, I wrote $1,000 more for my property taxes, but the rate was less, so I feel better. Yeah. <laughs> right. They care what it costs. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So anyway, I continue to think that something that our year-round residents would benefit greatly from. And a very small segment of the year-round population would see their bills go up. Very um, small. The, the residential exemption, if it's going to benefit anyone, is going to be in the not the lowest category because those tend to be renters. So the landlords might get that exemption. But whether they pass that along to the tenants or not, I don't know. Um, it's the people like myself, all my board would benefit uh, from a residential exemption, um, but we still don't agree. Was it something like 800000 or $900,000 in value before it tips over? Um, that's what it was the last time I did the analysis. Um, it's probably 753 right now, but... So you also have to be valued more than 700000 And that's, that's what people who are residents... Yeah. Negatively impact you. As a resident. As It'll a negatively resident. impact all Everyone vacant else. land, yes. all part-timers, <laughs> all land, you know, landlords and whatever else, but... Uh, within a residential group. So basically the people who are most impacted by it are second homeowners who by definition are more are better off than people who come and afford one home. <clears throat> and on the same token, there's a lot of people that are moving down to the cave to for their retirement and they um, have a higher standard of living than a lot of the year round residents here. Um, they're just moving down with, with, with more, more Right, but if they became year-round residents, they'd benefit from this, yeah. too. I know they would. Right. I know. I mean, you can only social engineer so much. More than it would be. Right, it would be. Right, right. Want me to make the motion? Yes. I make a motion to move that the town... Close the public hearing. Oh, okay, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. I'm usually the one that remembers that. Make a motion to close the public Second. hearing. Okay, roll call on that, please. Yes. 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 I make a motion that we move that the town of Mashby adopt a tax rate factor of one for all classes of property with no discount for open space, no residential exemption, and no small commercial exemption. Need a second? Second. Second. Okay, roll call on that, please. No. Yes. 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 Jason? Thank, Thank you, you very Jason. much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have uh, new business. Uh, we have a, an acceptance of a resignation from the Cultural Council. I Mr. make a motion Robert to accept Mendes. the resignation from the Cultural Council, Robert Mendes, with a letter. Second. He's really good on that. Okay. Uh, roll call. Yes. 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 Um, number two, we have an acceptance of resignation for Mashby Cable and Advanced Technology Advisory Board. Uh, Ms. Wendy Williams. Make a motion to accept Wendy Williams' resignation from the MCAT committee. With Second. Yeah. Uh, roll call. With a letter. Yeah, letter and roll call. Yes. 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 And we have a discussion um, an approval to deficit, deficit spend the I'm snow. So, and nice. The snowflake has fallen. And so, and I, so, I so make a motion that we approve the deficit spending the snowfall. I ice second account. it. <laughs> All right. Um, and roll call. Sure. Yes. 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 <laughs> Salt. yes. Right. And just want to point out, if we do increase this, it's what we're stuck with. We, that's right. We can't we decrease. It doesn't change. That's, yeah. that's right. Does Some melt? people may question why we're asking for this, because there hasn't been a snowflake. We just spent about 85000 for salt, mm -hmm. and uh, the line item okay. is only 116000 mm -hmm. If we get a storm, we want to be able to yeah. Yeah. take care of it. Yeah, we've done a great job for the last few years. And Let's so, keep uh, it going. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> So, and uh, we have an update on the Johns Pond uh, town manager, Rod Cox. Yes. Uh, town Council uh, has addressed the issue 
and he has indicated <coughs> changing the present daily permit to a weekly pass permit in light of a state grant requirement requiring equal access to residents of the Commonwealth in terms of the criteria established by the town for admission to the area is residents neutral, i.e. doesn't distinguish between town residents and other Massachusetts residents and the policy slash regulation advances of a legitimate public interest such as traffic control, crowd control, public safety or the like is permissible in his view. Uh, so until we have any contrary information or conflicting information I say we keep things as is. We already passed this identity. Uh, right. yes. so, so, so put, so put I, town councils in plain English. We get rid of the day pass. And we oppose a weekly pass, weekly pass. as Which long as it applies do. equally to people who live in town, people who live out of town. Right. In his opinion, we're within our rights under the Good equal so. access agreement for the state. Right. Right. Always subject to somebody saying different. Further review. Right. But <clears> it stands right now. You wanted an update. Mm -hmm. And there it is. And that solved some of the problems that people were perceiving. That's what I was, yes. I called for the update just to inquire about if it seemed to resolve some of the issues that were happening the second half of the summer. I, I can good. certainly say to you that far many more residents are pleased with it than not pleased with it up to this point. And the intention is to continue this forward into the summer of 2018? Unless directed otherwise. Okay. Fair enough. Seems to be working. Why change? I'm good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for following up on that. Okay. Well, that uh, cleans up the uh, agenda. Uh, any uh, liaison or? Uh, I have on <coughs> December 2nd across the street at the community park. It's the lighting of the tree. Community park. Yeah. Okay. Will any I special Santa, guest be there? I think a special guest will be there for the children. Really? You yep. think Santa Claus might show I up? I think I heard that he will be there. Oh. Rumor has it. Well, I'm going to try to be there. Harry was showing up this year. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to compliment everyone who did the rotary this year. had anything yes. to do with it. The uh, new LED lights look tremendous. I didn't think it could look any better, but it does. I, yeah. I agree. Wow. You're right. Good job. It's amazing. Without a doubt. <clears> there continue. was many, it's many up. people took part in that. Yeah, it's, it's probably the best, it ha I'm sure it's the best, best display of lighting on the Cape. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, great job. Um, I did have an update um, on the um, Assembly of Delegates. Um, last uh, meeting there was, they had the, uh, the health department from uh, Bosnia County, and um, one thing I was, I was not aware of, that they offer immunization shots, especially overseas for travel, and um, their rates are um, much more reasonable reasonable than they would be in a private sector um, and they're, they're available at any time so um, something to keep in mind I have a, uh, a pamphlet that where do they have it um, at the Boston County complex I forget what what the building is but it's it's up by the but by the uh, the old prison area yeah they're yeah. up in the prison huh? yeah yeah so um, but I, I just was not unaware, unaware of it so um, I thought it was good information for for that reason so you having fun with all that mm -hmm. you having fun with all that <laughs> it's, it's, it's very uh, eye-opening because I was unaware of what the Bosnia County government does. And I think a lot of people are, but um, these are things of this nature where I didn't know you could get <laughs> immunization shots. So um, whatever it might be, if it's beneficial to the public, we pay for it, why not use it? Mm -hmm. So any other... Nothing. Nothing. Make a motion okay. to adjourn. My uh, quick compliments to the Housing Institute uh, for Hack. That was a great five-week course and very informative on affordable housing and uh, zoning and and such. But it was a great course. Great. Make a motion to adjourn. Second.